Now we're going to do this theory. How do we turn these nonlinear graphs into linear ones? And what I've said here is this exact topic comes up in stats year two. And when I say exact, I mean the exact same thing. So the first thing we're going to look at, case one, is turning from a polynomial kind of curve and trying to make it become linear on a graph. And when I'm, what I mean by that is taking something that's like a y equals 2x cubed and trying to fit it so that we can turn it into a log graph instead. So suppose our original model was a polynomial one. For example, y equals ax to the n. Well, I've just put a little star here to say that we could also allow non-integer n's, which means we wouldn't really call it a polynomial. So the term would then not strictly be polynomial, but would still say that the function had polynomial growth. So we can still do this kind of model for any value of n. It doesn't have to be an integer. So the trick for all of these questions is that we take logs of both sides. And you can take any log. In this particular case, I'm just going to write log. I'm not going to write ln or anything. So I'm going to take logs of both sides. So I get log y equals log ax to the power of n. Now I'm going to apply some log, law, log laws now. So that on this right hand side, I'm going to split it into a log a plus a log of x to the power of n. That was using the multiplication one. Now I'm going to try and deal with this power, so I'm going to pull that power down to the front. So I'm now going to replace this so that I have plus n log x. So this actually, if we think about what all of these separate bits mean, this is now like the y variable. This is just a constant. n is just a constant. And then this is like the x variable. So I've just used a capital letter y and a capital letter x here. Now, if I write this down again, if I write y is log y equals, I'm going to say n x plus log a. Doesn't this look really similar to y equals m x plus c? So this is telling me now, if I replace y with log y and if i replace x with log x we come up with something that is going to make a straight line so you can see what's happened here both of them have had to been have had to take logs of them log of x and log of y which is means that the axis is no longer y but it's log y and it's no longer x but it's log x so what I've written is that if y is ax to the n, then the graph of log y against log x, in other words, this bit here, this is log y against log x, will be a straight line with gradient n and vertical intercept at log a. Well, we can tell that it's the vertical intercept because this is the y-intercept that we've got here. Well, in this case, it would be the log y-intercept because it's like the plus c. And the n is like the gradient of the normal straight line there. So they've both been taken logs, which has meant that the graph axes are not x and y, but they are log x and log y. And you don't need to memorize this. This is just the process that we will do each time. So really, the only thing you need to memorize is just take logs of both sides. So the second case is if we have something that is an exponential one and we want to make it become linear. So let's just remind us if this was polynomial because we had x in the base, this one is exponential because we've got x in the power. And it may not be these letters a and b, but as soon as you see that you've got x in the power, we know it's exponential. So let's suppose that our original model was an exponential one. Let's take logs of both sides and see what happens. So I'm going to get log of y equals log of a, b to the power of x. So I'm going to split the right-hand side into a log a plus a log b to the power of x. And now I'm going to split that second bit. Because x is in the power, I'm going to bring it down the front so that it looks like this. Now, if this thing, if I replace this with a capital Y, it doesn't matter about what letter you use, really. This is just a constant. So I have log a. And then I've got x, which is just the variable. So I'm going to keep that as just an x. And then I've got log b. So what's happened here is this should look similar to y equals mx plus c. In fact, I'm going to write that in an order so that we can keep it in that traditional order, mx plus c. So you can see here that the gradient 
is log n, is log b, and that log a is the intercept, and the only thing that is in its logarithm form is y. x is exactly the same as it was before. It's just x. It's not a log x. So here we've got that y is equal to log y. x is just the same here. So the impact that this has on the graph is that only the y-axis has changed to log y. The x-axis is still x because it hasn't changed at all. The only one that changed was y equals log y. And so what I've written is that if y is equal to a, b to the power of x, then the graph of log y against x will be a straight line with gradient log b and y-intercept, or vertical intercept because we can't call it the y-axis anymore, of log a. So just notice the difference here. The key difference compared to case one is that we're only logging the y values for this. So like the number of transistors that we did for the computers, not their x values, which was the years elapsed. No, you don't need to memorize the contents of these boxes and we will work them out from scratch each time. So let's just quickly summarize the orange box. If it's a polynomial kind of graph, you'll end up where the x axis and the y axis will have their values logarithmized or have logs taken of them. And if it's an exponential one, you will find out that it's only the y values that needed to be turned into a logarithm. And that's just like what you did on here. This was the y-axis that had been, log had been had logs taken of it. The x-axis didn't. Okay, so for exponentials, that's the difference of things that will end up. Like I just said, you are not going to need to memorize this process. All you need to know is you just take logs of both sides, apply your log laws, and it turns it into a straight line kind of graph. So in the next video, I'm going to do four different examples, including some exam questions that show you exactly how these things work.